So in our quest to understand stars, we started off talking about the magnitudes of stars. That's a measure of how bright they appear. Now, what we've been talking about uh, here was the apparent magnitude. The apparent magnitude is how bright do they look to you. It's not necessarily a measure of how bright they actually are. We'll be getting to that. But it's a measure of how bright do they look to you. So the next step is we want to measure the distance to a star. How do you measure the distance to a star? You know, it's like you want to measure the distance, you know, from one end of your computer uh, screen to the other. You can use a ruler or tape measure or something. You want to measure how wide a room is. You can measure, use a tape measure. Uh, you want to figure out how far it is from, uh, for example, where you live to like downtown um, Houston or something. You can drive there and use the odometer of your car, and I'll give you a measure of how far you went. Uh, now, it gets more complicated. If you're trying to figure out how far it is uh, and there's no roads there, then you have to do surveying. Uh, uh, if you want to try to figure out how far it is, uh, for example, between uh, Paris, Texas, and Paris, France, we cannot drive there because uh, you've got to go across the water, go across oceans, and boats and ships and airplanes and so forth don't have odometers. So there has to be an entirely different way of measuring it. How far do you go to the moon? Spacecraft don't have odometers. And so, so measuring distances quickly becomes very, very difficult if you're talking about something further away than that. Uh, the stars themselves are exceedingly far. How far? Well, the stars are just little pinpoints in the sky. Now, one of the arguments that they've been having over many, many years was exactly how far away are things. What does Earth do? You know, there was a big argument. You know, uh, uh, you know, you got Earth. Does the Sun go around the Earth, or does the Earth go around the Sun? And one of the big arguments they had against the Earth going around the Sun was that uh, uh, if if you have stars out here and you got the Sun, if the Earth moved, then the position of the star would look like it's shifting back and forth in the sky. Okay. And nobody saw that shift anywhere in the sky. And so a lot of astronomers were arguing, well, that means Earth doesn't move. Well, on the other hand, um, the mathematics of describing how the solar system works didn't make sense unless Earth and the planets all went around the sun. And so that, that was the mathematics uh, and the description of the, the solar system that Nicholas Copernicus came up with. And so this was like a paradox that astronomers had in the uh, uh, 16th century. Well, how do you reconcile the math says that Earth ought to be moving, but we don't see the stars shifting back and forth? Uh, astronomer by name of Giordano Bruno actually decided that meant that the stars are so far away that the shift is so small. Because if, if things are really far away, then the angle doesn't really shift that much, you know, if you're looking at it, even if you move. And so, so the farther away something is, the less the motion is apparent. And so he says, well, that means the stars must be really, really far away. They must be vastly farther away than anybody had ever thought. And if they are, in fact, that far away, they have to be pretty bright. And so he reasoned that they must be nearly as bright as the sun. So the stars themselves must be suns. And um, that's not exactly correct, but it is, it is, in essence, the basic idea that the sun is a star, it appears so bright because we're so close to it, and those other things that we look up in the sky uh, are giant big balls of glowing gas that are like the sun. Uh, uh, so so they, they look dim because they are very far away. And so 
uh, th this ac actually turns out to be the basic sort of concept. Okay, so how far away? Well, really far away. Turns out that stars are so far away that the distance that light takes, the distance between one star and another star is so great that it takes light years to go there. Now, light travels very fast, 186,000 miles every second. And so the stars are so far away, it takes light many years to, to get from one star to the other. And so astronomers sometimes use the term light year to be the distance that light travels in one year. Okay. That turns out to be about nine and a half trillion kilometers. That's roughly six trillion miles. Light travels fast, 186,000 miles every second, and a lot of seconds in a year. So one year, light would travel about 6 trillion miles. And so uh, stars, we measure distances in light years. The closest star to us is close to four and a third light years away. So it would take light four and a third years to get from that star to us. Remember I said that one of the arguments against stars being, being uh, against the Earth moving was the idea that stars didn't seem to shift. That shift is called parallax. And you can simulate parallax. You know, what you do is you hold a pencil or something out in front, at, at arm's length and then cover one eye and look what the pencil is sitting in front of and then move your hand to cover the other eye and it looks like the object shifts a little bit. Well, it's not shifting, it's your perspective is shifting. And so that's parallax. So if you look, uh, if Earth, if you got a star, you look at it, you see it sitting over here. And then as six months later, Earth is in a different spot and you look and it looks like it shifts. Now, the farther away the star is, the less the shift is going to be. So that is parallax. Now, different books label parallax differently. Some books label parallax with a P, and some books label parallax with a pi. I learned it using a pi, so that's, that's how I normally use it. Uh, but some books label it a P for parallax. But in astronomy, we also use P for other things, and so that just makes it more confusing. And so the farther away something is, the more the parallax. Well, likewise, the smaller the parallax, the farther away it is. So if, if you were to measure this angle, if you knew that distance between the Earth and the Sun, you could do some geometry to find what the distance is. This, the, this, there are equations for doing that. Okay. So again, here's an example. that Earth, You look from Earth to a star, and it looks like it's there, and then it looks like it's here, shifted over a little bit, and, and so if you divide this in half, half of that shift is the parallax right there. The very first parallax measured, and it's very difficult to measure because the parallax is tiny. The very first parallax measured was the star 61 Cygni by a fellow by the name of Frederick Bessel. Okay, and this wasn't until the 1800s. Remember, uh, Giordano Bruno suggested that maybe the parallax is there, but so small that we can't measure. He made that suggestion in 1600. It was over 200 years later they actually measured the first parallax because it is so small. In fact, by 1900, uh, only a few dozen stars have had their parallax measured. And the reason it's difficult is the closest star to us has a parallax that is close to one four thousandth of a degree. So that's less than one arc second, because an arc second is, is one thirty six hundredth of a degree. And so so an arc second is an incredibly tiny, 3,600 times smaller than a degree. So that's an entire, entirely a, a, a tiny, tiny little uh, uh, angle. And so it was not until the 1800s that technology developed where we could even measure the first parallax. And so, so that's why this, this, this 
is so hard is it's so tiny and that's why for a long time astronomers did not realize that in fact that there was parallax because it is so small okay the relationship between parallax and distance the relationship is the distance is one divided by parallax and so uh, uh the distance you measure in art and parsecs now what the heck is a parsec 